We are back in the TV studio here at the UEG Week in Barcelona 2019. And with me is another Avardi, Professor Magdi El Salhi, correct? Yes, correct. <laughs> and you are from the Department of Clinical Medicine, uh, Professor of Gastroenterology, University of Bergen in Norway. And you have just been awarded with a top abstract award for a study you and your colleagues conducted on the effects of fecal microbiota transplantation in IBS patients. First of all, congratulations. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Now, IBS, your name is closely linked to this special condition since several years now. Uh, and uh, on the other side, FMT is a very much debated issue these days in other medical conditions, so IBS is no exception. Um, tell us about your study, what you did in this double-blind randomized study and what your findings were. Uh, we don't know exactly what is the cause or of irritable bowel syndrome. and. Uh, Actually, we think that it's a multifactorial uh, disorder. And it seems that the intestinal microbiota plays a very important role in the pathophysiology of irritable bowel syndrome. Uh, the problem is that we don't know which type of bacteria is more important. Uh, how long should we take probiotics? And we don't know if uh, this type of bacteria uh, is uh, suitable for every patient. So fecal microbiota transplantation, you, you take uh, a very healthy bacteria from a special sewer donor and give it to the patient. So you, you transfer a lot of bacteria, perhaps bacteria we don't know much about that uh, 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 essential uh, for a healthy uh, bowel. <coughs> What do you think is a better concept? A monodonor concept uh, opposed to a multi-donor concept? There's this term of a super pooper going around. Uh, actually, we, we have a little... Uh, 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 we don't know exactly what the super donor is. And, uh, We have in this study discovered a, 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 the bacterial profile of a super donor, but we, we stuck to the, uh, uh, what we know about the bacteria. We know that uh, treated with antibiotics or taking medication affect negatively the uh, intestinal bacteria. We know that To be, fed, uh, to be born by cesarean section or formula fed affect negatively uh, the, the intestinal bacteria. We know that sport and sport specific uh, diet uh, has a very good effect on the bacteria. Uh, so when we, uh, we choose our donor, we had it uh, smoking also. I forget to say that. We know that smoking uh, and seizing smoking affect negatively the bacteria. So our donor was non-smoker. He has no medication. He treated few times with antibiotics. He was born by vaginal delivery and breastfed. And he is uh, training five times a week. And he has a special diet. Uh, that uh, they, uh, they have a lot of supplementary diet in, uh, in sports. So his, uh, his food is rich in protein, fibers, vitamins, minerals. So these factors is what we should have in, in a donor. And uh, I think in, in the uh, few we, uh, years to come, we will have a lot of signatures, so we can have a little bit more information which donor is more suitable. So do you think that your patient in your study benefited from, from the FMT? Yes, they did, actually. And uh, now it's almost one year, and uh, the majority of the patients is still... Uh, 
uh, respond to the treatment. And they fall in two categories. Half of the patient are completely cured. Uh, they can eat whatever they want. Uh, they, they have no complaints about anything. And the other half, they have uh, to think about what they are eating still. But they improved very, uh, uh, very much. Uh, so I think that that's, that's depends upon the donor that we have. We, we were lucky to have this donor. And I don't think it's, it's uh, difficult to find such a donor. If you spend the time and the energy to find a donor, so he is like a goose that uh, bought uh, golden eggs. Because we use the frozen uh, facets. So when you, you find a, a good donor, you, you can freeze his facets and you can treat thousands of patients. And, and that's another advantage of our study. We can use frozen uh, faces. Yeah. So you, you don't have this logistics uh, problem when you have a fresh uh, so do you Do you think that uh, FMT somehow, sometime, will become a standard ter therapy for irritable, uh, irritable bowel disease, or is it just too far away? I don't think we are so far away because uh, fecal transplantation is very popular now and uh, most people do it in private clinics where they get a, uh, a, a not well defined donors mm. so it's, it's open because we, we use fecal transplantation under many years mm -hmm. for uh, treating other conditions like uh, Clostridium difficile. So, so, uh, and I can't find, uh, I can't think about why we shouldn't have it in the clinic. If you have a, a donor with, and you can freeze his uh, facets, and then you administrate it through a gastroscope, it takes about two to five minutes. Why shouldn't we treat patients or, or, yeah. or with fecal microbiota transplantation? Professor El Sahi, it was nice talking to you. Thank you for stopping by. Congratulations again and enjoy your time in Barcelona. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thank you.